Uh, I may have been off the air for a while, but, uh, you know, I have been very busy and uh, also trying to get lots of interviews going on. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of them. And uh, I want to welcome her to my show because I'm really honored to have her here. This is Andy McAfee, who was the voice of Phoebe Heyerdahl from Hey Arnold. Uh, Annie, welcome to the Arameta Show. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing well. First, uh, I really want to talk to you about uh, about uh, Hey Arnold because it's basically one of my favorite cartoon shows. Uh, how were you approached with uh, the role of playing Phoebe and uh, how did it all come about? Well, I wish I was approached. I wish I was that famous, but I had to audition for it like every other kid. <laughs> so um, the way was my, my agency sent me out for it. And um, I'm going to try to remember because it was so long ago. But, uh, you know, you just show up and they give you a little script and it has nothing to do with the actual show. You get maybe like three lines of the character. So you don't really know what's going on in the bigger context. You just sort of have to just figure it out. And uh, I did a little voice and luckily it worked and uh, I was hired for it. Uh, Joey Paul was casting and I remember meeting her. She has bright red hair, so I remember that. How did you feel about playing Phoebe for the first time? And was it a character they could easily adapt to? Phoebe didn't have a lot of character development yet. I think Phoebe's a character who sort of grew with the show and with a little bit of my personality. Um, the first episode I did, I think, was down, Downtown as Fruits or something like that, where yeah. Phoebe really only whispered in Helga's ear. And they really had already done that that uh, episode, and they sort of stuck me in there after the episode was already done. So I just went in and ABR'd it and said like some little line, because they were trying to establish her character. And uh, so when I first started doing Phoebe, she didn't really have a whole lot of layers yet. It was just a shy sort of sidekick. So at first I didn't really even know who she was. And then um, as the series progressed and, and our characters progressed, then I definitely enjoyed playing her and understood who she was. And hopefully I added a little bit of who I think she was to the to the role. Uh, obviously she was the uh, psychic of uh, Helga Pataki, which was played by uh, Francesca Smith. Uh, what was it like to work with her uh, on the show? Uh, I love working with, uh, she's going to kill me. I've, I've always called her Franny. <laughs> she hates that. <laughs> But uh, I just, uh, she actually emailed me the other day and, and she's like, stop calling me Fran. Like, <laughs> we all call her that because it's just sort of something that stuck when we were all kids. And even Craig um, Bartlett still, she's like, yeah. he still calls me that too. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Francesca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, Fran's a really, really intelligent, uh, amazing actress. So, and I knew her before Hey Arnold. I've known her a long time. So, um, you know, to be able to do a show with her and just watch her grow up. It was definitely an amazing experience. She's a really smart, great person. How would you describe uh, Craig Bartlett as uh, uh, creatively? I mean, how much uh, direction did he give you on the show? <laughs> Craig is like your favorite uncle. You know, he's still <laughs> enough of a kid that he plays with you, but he's still the adult and you have to listen to him. Um, I mean, just it's just an incredibly amazing time, I think, in the, in the 90s to be part of a cartoon. It, it was very creative. The the Studios gave him a lot of, of freedom to play and to create and, and to be a part of a, a full cast. You know, recording as a full cast is a very rare thing nowadays. It was obvious that Phoebe was having something going on with Gerald in the show. How did you feel about that particular story, Huck? Created that ourselves. We were just fooling around. Really? You know, as kids do. Yeah, we, um, I can't remember the episode. Oh, I think it was um, the one at the fair I don't remember the name, like one of Phoebe's first episodes. I think it was Cheese um, Festival, I think it was called. I can't remember, I think. Oh, no, no, it was Operation Ruthless. Yeah, that yeah, was the there episode you go. The Actually, I did Ruth's voice in that. Oh, before really? Before they hired Lacey. Oh, and wow. Just her little giggles and stuff. And then um, and then when she had a speaking role, they, they hired another actress. So Jamil and I were just screwing around, just, you know, off mic and just playing around. And then... Uh, and then they thought that was funny, so they used it, and then they just sort of went with it for the rest of the series. Um, I wanted to ask about, besides uh, Jamil and besides uh, uh, Craig and Franny, uh, it was who, who else was uh, on the show uh, did you really like uh, to work with in regards to uh, you know, doing, doing the right, you know, reading the scripts and uh, voice acting? Well, I mean, I loved being there with the whole cast. Um, I think I probably related more a little bit to the older kids because I was the oldest. 15, 16, and you're you know, a year or two older than people, that's a big deal. So I had seniority. Justin was the next oldest, I believe. So, but I mean, I liked them all because they were all so different, and it was it was just really fun to have a whole cast of kids. It, you know, it was different a different experience every week. But I kept in touch more with the older kids, and and that has a lot to do with the fact that not all of them are still you know actors or in LA or you know. So the kids who did stay here, I talked to a lot more. 
Um, as the uh, show uh, as the show progressed, and uh, you know Phoebe became, uh, you know, basically she was given a lot more uh, character, and then eventually she was given uh, her own episodes. I mean, how exciting was it to uh, you know watch uh, Phoebe Hyadol uh, basically grow into this character to the point where you know they could you could uh, put her in her own episodes, and how exciting was it to do have your own episodes in the show? It was really exciting because uh, it was actually the fact that Phoebe became that um, integral to the show was something that we had to actually focus on because when I first started the character and she didn't have a lot of uh, layers yet, my, the voice for her, uh, I guess, was a teeny bit different. It was a little raspier. And then as Phoebe became, you know, a little more submissive and she sort of grew this relationship with Helga, um, I think my voice changed a little bit. And Craig and the producers were kind of aware of that. And, uh, and, and I guess uh, some of the fans had become aware of that too. To have her really solidify that character enough to where she was getting her own shows was was a huge deal for me. It meant that I really had found who she was because she started at one place and then she did change a little bit as I got to know her. So when when my voice became more of the, you know, the, the little shy thing versus I was more right here when I first started. <laughs> uh, and they were just like, you know what? It's okay. Just keep her where she is now and Let's just go with it. Can I just ask you, could you do a little bit of, uh, just for the Hey Arnold fans who are listening, could you do a little bit of Phoebe Heidel for us? Well, I can just do, come in, Helga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still amazed you can still do the voice. It's like, I know Justin can still do the voice because he demonstrated it to me when I suggested that maybe someone else could play him in the, if, if they ever decide to bring back the show. Tell us about um, when the uh, when a movie was being considered. I mean, uh, what what were you uh, first told when uh, basically when you were told that Hey Arnold's basically become popular enough to uh, basically do a full motion picture? I mean, what was the uh, buzz you know around I, that time? I don't, don't really remember the specifics of the movie because when you're a kid, you just pretty much get a date and a time, and you show up, and you you know you're not really a part of the whole behind the scenes kind of action. So I remember I don't know if this was after the movie was done or before, but I just remember that. I don't think that the movie we made was supposed to be the movie. Yeah, he wanted to do the jungle Arnold's movie. That was what he told me. Uh, of, uh, yeah. Before, yeah. yeah. Really, it's like, uh, what well, was it just basically was just, you know, here's a date, show up and basically, you know, do do the voice. It's, uh, you know, was there no, uh, was there any discussion about, you know, how the character was going to progress from, uh, you know, from, from your standpoint or was it basically just, it's up to the writers, let them decide what to do. Just, the movie to me just seemed like a big episode. Yeah, there wasn't really anything, um, you know, significantly any significant changes with my character. I think I think Helga. I remember. I think she revealed her love for Arnold in in the movie. So I think there was a big change for their characters. But uh, Phoebe, I was just thrilled she even got on the poster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was in the wrong colored sweater as well. If you if uh, if I believe as well, she had that blue sweater, and uh, then they decided to put her in yellow. Which oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I still got the DVD with the uh, with it on it. I just wondered why, why, why. So uh, I, I don't know how uh, a lot a lot of fans are still disappointed that uh, you know though they got Hey Arnold the movie, they didn't get the Jungle movie, which would have seen Arnold go off and uh, find his parents. I mean, uh, are you disappointed in a way that uh, Hey Arnold uh, the series didn't end the way it it, it it did? I think so. I think my personal opinion is that is that the movie was like Nickelodeon's. I mean, I don't know how business works. In the studio, but as you know, a, an actor in the series, I felt like it was sort of just a long episode. It wasn't really; it was more for adults. I felt like <laughs> I, it didn't feel like um, the freedom that we had as a cast to create as much as the series. You know, the movie just felt sort of like it was a studio project versus it was just us being us and creating something together. Yeah. That was how I felt as as a kid doing it. If uh, Craig Bartlett uh, picked up the phone and. Uh... Uh, and asked you to uh, to uh, say, hey, there's this, uh, you know, we've got the Jungle movie back. I mean, uh, would you go back to play Phoebe? Ha! <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a nanosecond. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's kind of an interesting time, um, you know, now with social media, because I think the public has a much quicker, more direct route to uh, voice their opinions, to voice what they want than they ever did you know it used to be like in the 90s if you liked hey arnold and you wanted to see something on the show or whatever you would have to sit down write a letter send it to some random address you know and and hope somebody saw it now you can you can mass text or or email or um tweet tweet or facebook a million different parts of a, of a net of a studio and your message will be heard and you can trend things and so I think it's a, a really unique time if if there are enough people who want to see something, I think that they can, that it's possible 
cool to make it happen. I mean, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> okay, before we move off, hey, Arnold, I mean, is there any, uh, well, what memories do you take away from uh, being on the show? I mean, uh, what would you say was uh, your, you know, your favorite memories from uh, doing that show? Oh, wow. I think just the whole period of time. Now, now it's sort of all one big memory, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just uh i just think it was just an amazing time to be in animation you know in the in the 90s being in the the studios were just so supportive and um you know that they, they had a lot of events for us the kids choice awards i got to go to and just just kind of being a family it really was a cartoon that you felt like uh, you were a family on so i would say the whole thing was pretty much a good memory <laughs> Okay, so uh, to all your friends, uh, f- sorry, to all your fans in uh, Hey Arnold the fandom, in uh, Mass Effect fandom, and uh, various other ones, uh, what's your message to all of them for all the work that you've done? Oh, my message. Well, I wish uh, I wish I had time to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know what kind of a message I would have. I just. I just. I guess I would just say that. Um, you know, I've just been really honored to play any character that people connect to and and are fans of. It's it's, it's an honor to to have your creativity uh, liked by people. So I guess I would just say thanks. Uh, Andy, Andy McAfee, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the Aaron Meta show. I really want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule for yeah. coming on the show. I really do appreciate no it. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks so much.